would like to call a meeting to order. All requirements for the Open Public Meetings Act have been met for this meeting in the West Morris Regional High School District Board of Education. Notice was sent to the Morris County Clerk and the clerks of the municipalities comprised in the Regional District, the Observer Tribune, the Daily Record, and Star Ledger. Notice was also posted in the District Administration Building, West Morris Central High School, West Morris Menham High School, and on the West Morris Regional website. Marsha Asdale. Here. Jamie Button. Present. <clears throat> Christian Forrester. Here. Joseph Goleida. Here. Uh, James Johnston. Here. Uh, David Lobron. Here. John Meyer. Here. Tom Rashar. Here. Jackie Schramm. Here. Uh, Brendan Millick. And Brian Riccardi. Here. You do have a quorum. Thank you. Can we all rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Would I please have a motion to approve the meeting minutes from November 14th? So moved. Thank you, John. Second. Thank you, Tom. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Session. Anthony? Well, I have three items. You know that usually during the beginning of the superintendent's re report work session, we mention student achievement and student activities. I know we have a full schedule with both the program of studies and new teachers, but there were three things that I wanted to discuss quickly. At this time of year, the board usually asks me to report on early decision college acceptances, and I could tell you that uh, at our schools, we have heard from Columbia, Cornell, University of Pennsylvania, and Dartmouth, and I think even more important than that, there were a number of students whose first choices for early decision were not Ivy League schools, but that they were appropriate schools for them, and they've also heard, and the acceptances have been um, very, very favorable. Secondly, I know that we have been asked about the robotics team at Mendham, and for me to report on that, and I'd like to report that two teams have made it to the world championships at Anaheim, California, with two more that are comp competing this weekend, in Cherry Hill with the possibility of them making the world championships also. So congratulations for the students and advisors who are participating in that. Finally, you know that one of the things that we like so much about the International Baccalaureate Program is the fact that our students compete in fora which are, are international and national in scale. And I know that the American Psychological Association runs a yearly national essay contest and that essay contest begins at the county level and it focuses on research methods and empirical study in psychology. And there were 28 judges and it was reported to me that the American Psychological Association of Morris County named its winners. There are three winners and eight honorable mentions. And out of those results, all three winners came from IBHL students in our district. And out of the honorable mentions, six of the eight came from our IBHL studies. And I, and I can tell you personally that, what that one of the things that says to me is the degree to which IB has kept us on a cutting edge of research within a particular discipline. I know that when our first psychology teacher went to be trained in psychology, came back and, and complained, there's no Freud here. And IB said, well, Freud belongs in the philosophy department. Modern psychology depends on empirical research. And we've adopted that curriculum and that empirical research has yielded these, what I think are remarkable results. And that's all I have. They are, thank you. Uh, Dr. Hunter, we have such a crowd tonight, I can't find, there you are. <laughs> Um, just before I forget to mention, anybody who's speaking from the audience tonight, if you could please use the podium with the microphone. Um, we are being taped. So good evening, everyone. My purpose tonight is to talk about the program of studies that is going to be issued, uh, is given to the board to approve tonight. It's the program of studies for 2012-2013. Um, yesterday, I took three of my grandchildren to see 
the uh, play A Christmas Carol, and it sort of reminded me of what I'm doing tonight. I have ghosts of program studies from the past. We have a present program of studies and things, of course, that will affect our students in the future. So I want to talk about the past first with our program of study, then I'll talk about the present, and then I'll talk about some of the, our projections for the future. Last year, thanks to uh, work by Mr. Muscatella and Mr. Mattias, they worked with me to uh, revise the program of studies. With their diligence and with the help of the teachers, particularly their lead teachers, we went through every single page of the program of studies to make it truly reflect what we, what we do. And I'm going to say this about you. There were times when I was so frustrated with that man because he was just becoming back with more and more. changed from the 10th grade or the 11th grade, just adding them. The other present change we had to do was, of course, um, related to something, an area of confusion in IB. One of um, the IB courses that we offer in design technology, we offer one in the tech department and another one in the family and consumer science department. One of the courses is called design technology, food sciences, and technology. It seemed that when students were signing up, they kind of thought, some students thought they were going to do IB cooking. <laughs> the course is a very rigorous course that has the combination of science and food technology. The curriculum is uh, designed to look at things such as the reasons for world hunger, or personal nutrition, those types of things are included in the curriculum. So we added into the program of studies this non-cooking course. Okay. So that was one change, that uh, a welcome change. Another uh, change that really has to do with the present has to do with our Mars County um, Schools of Technology. Um, over the years, they have changed their course offerings and have categorized them in three different ways. They've categorized courses for special needs students, for shared time students, which are students who come to us for their regular, for their basic instruction and then go for their vocational instruction there. And also, they, as, as you know, our um, Morris County has wonderful full-time academies for students from our district. So what I did in the program of studies, and again, I want to thank uh, Renee Vaccaro, who did all the work on uh, placing things on the pages and all that, who's, my who's our administrative assistant. Um, she came to me and she said, why don't we just look at the courses and put them in those three categories that the county uses? And that's what we did. <coughs> so hopefully that will help parents and students make wise decisions with regard to the Votech choices. So present uh, for, the, uh, for the future, there are a couple of things we've added. One of the things that came out, uh, again, was an IB concern that we had. The IB music uh, courses that we offered were offered in a different, they were delivered in a different way at Central than they were delivered at Mendham. Our concern, and this came as a concern from um, from various sources, from students, from uh, teachers, from coordinators, from myself, from Dr. Di Batista. We want more students involved in the higher level IB testing for music. It seemed like the course sequence that we had uh, was uh, so intense that students were being precluded from also exploring other things. So we've devised a program that um, has been in place at Mendham for a while, and we are looking at um, using the same type of program and even expanding it between the two schools of um, offering IB seminars for students, and we have done this before, and we're going to continue to do that. With what that necessitated that we uh, get rid of, uh, we eliminate an IB course in music history that was not really um, highly <coughs> subscribed. So we feel that the seminars have worked, and we only intend more to beef them up and to get both schools involved in that. Uh, the other thing, and I've, ex and I've, and I've received uh, questions from board members on this, the state mandated testing program that we have to be involved in. Well, over the years, 
um, and I know some teachers already know this. Um, we've tested students in Algebra 1, and that we were man it was mandated that we test them in Algebra 1. As of this year, we do not have to test students anymore in Algebra 1. That does not mean that they will never be tested at the level, and I'll get to that point in a minute. The biology test is um, that the state gives the performance assessment and the regular biology test are still in place for anyone who's in biology. The Algebra 1 is not. We have never been a school that has piloted the Algebra 2 test. We didn't want to take time away from instruction to be a pilot school for that. That pilot no longer exists also. Now, um, the concern, of course, also came from a board member that this year HESPA, the high school graduation requirement test, is end of life, which means it will not exist after this year. I've been, um, not reluctantly, but not forced, but kind of I've, I've felt obligated to go to a variety of meetings that have been held in the past two weeks to talk about the common core standards, to talk about state testing. And these have been sponsored, some by the state, some by uh, national uh, our national organization in the state on, um, on federal programs. And other districts seems equally as um, questioning as much as we are questioning. So we do not know how the next batch of, seen, of uh, students will be tested in 2013. However, in 2014, our state is in a consortium that um, has proposed that we test students in English 1, English 2, English 3, Algebra 1, uh, Geometry, and Algebra 2. Um, this is in the we were told at a state meeting it's more than in the works, that it's going to be a poss it's going it's going to happen. Uh, and of course the administrators that were there was five hundred administrators all raising their hands going, Well, can you possibly help us to prepare our students for this test? And they've assured us that some things will come out, some sample test items will be released. But those are the kinds of things that we have in our future for state mandated testing. And these all have to do with NCLB and those kinds of things that are coming down to us from the federal programs. The final thing I need to talk about in the program of studies is the offering of Chinese. Um, I'm going to read a memo that Dr. DiBattista and I wrote to uh, the Board of Education members and also shared with the um, constituent districts. During the 2012-2013 school year, the West Morris Regional High School District will offer instruction in Chinese. This has come about as a long-range initiative between the high school district and its constituents. Over the past several years, many of our community's educational professionals have participated with College Board's nationwide effort to bring Chinese language instruction to American schools. A number of our constituent districts have already begun to offer Chinese at the middle school level. So in September, we will have a cohort of freshmen to arrive who need further instruction in Chinese. So the high school program will continue the initiative that was begun through College Board, while at the same time, offering introductory courses to students who have had no experience with the language. So at both buildings, we intend to offer a course called Chinese Language and Culture, and we also intend to offer for students who have already had Chinese a course in Chinese. Questions and concerns from the board? Yes, Marcia. Um, you said that some of the tests are dictated by No Child Left Behind. Now, if the, if the state seeks a waiver from that, will that change that? Um, the waiver that the state is seeking uh, actually is, is to our advantage. It will not be a waiver that we do not have to take the test. Yeah, um, the waiver reads um, that schools will be divided into three groups. The first group will be about 70 schools that need intensive care. The um, second group will be ones that need, they're not critical, but they need some care. Our current test results, and also thanks to everyone here who's worked on QSAC, our current QSAC results put us in the third category, which is, yes, you will have to do these things, but you won't be monitored as closely as other things because, let's face it, we have a really good school district, and we have teachers who work very hard, and I was just talking to CAB and a curriculum advisory board that I'm very thankful for because they make me really go through the rigors of all this, and I said, uh, when people ask me why I work in West Morris, I work in West Morris because our children come ready to learn, and are because they come from families and, and a community that wants them to learn, and we have great teachers. So, you know, we are in that third category that's, we're okay. 
but we still are going to have to do these kinds of testing. Mm -hmm. And I also have a question, question about the sure. Chinese classes. Perhaps an audience member will bring this up, mm -hmm. but just in case they don't. Um, I know that our other languages have an honors class as a freshman. Was there any thought given to having an honors Chinese? And I know Dr. DiBattista will probably um, also want to say something, I hope, will want to say something about this. Uh, all of our level one classes, which mean um, Chinese, uh, which mean Latin one, French one, Spanish one, and our introductory Spanish and introductory to French are, are offered at the advanced or academic level. They're not offered at the honors level. So there is no honors instruction at the freshman level in languages, in any language. Really? <laughs> Kids come in from eighth grade, they all go into advanced. If they go in. Unless they go into unless they go, unless they go into two. Unless they go into two. If they come with preparation from from the K eight, they can go into two, which is then honors and leads them to the IB program. But, but, but freshmen are, could the level. Chinese kids go into but there's no two at the moment. At the moment there is no two. And if you notice the sequence that was on the memo that Alice and I yes. sent to you, that we have it set so that students will be able to achieve an AP level or an IB level by their junior and senior year. So there is no honors level at the freshman level. And my kids, I've had five kids here. I didn't know that. Sorry. Okay. okay. Other questions? Uh, it's not a question. I'd just like to thank uh, Dr. DiBattista for going to China a few years ago and enabling this program to get up and running after, you know, a couple of years of hoping and pressing fingers. And Alice has just gotten over her jet lag also. For and a, a TAB, this. a curriculum advisory board, brought up uh, some very wonderful points about this. Um, as the program has progressed from, I think Anthony, uh, Dr. DiBattista went three years ago and I went this, uh, I just got back actually, uh, about less than a month ago. Um, what the what Hanban College Board did this time was organize the people on the, 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 in, the in this adventure according to the state where you lived. So I got to talk to and be with for a week people from the state of New Jersey who either ha are in the same situation that we're in, which is the fledgling, you know, we, we're just trying to get this started here, people who have had it for a while and people who have had it for a long while. And so got to hear, you know, what text they're using, how they're training, how the teachers are coming to them trained. And Dr. DiBattista and I have had, I would say, hours of conversation about, you know, where are we going with this, what are we doing, how are we hiring a teacher, those kinds of pieces, and how we want this program to mirror the other programs. Our school, and again, I talked to the students again at CAB about this, our language program is strong. We use a very um, communicative approach. Our students, uh, over the past few years, our teachers test them not just in a written manner, they test them in an oral manner, they have inter personal interviews. All this came about because we know that's good instruction, but it also came about through IB and their requirements. And this is the exact way we would like to do Chinese. Um, some schools do it so that it's um, more the learning the letters, the learning the characters. Um, but the ones that have been successful with students, uh, do the same thing that we have done in our other languages, spend a lot of time on the speaking and communicative, the listening piece. Chinese is difficult to listen to because we're not used to hearing the sounds. And as one of the young students um, today at CAB quoted um, from her psychology teacher, the whole idea of language acquisition and how um, the, the guttural sounds you hear in Chinese, you really need to learn them when you're an infant, and it's pretty hard later on to learn them. Not impossible, because I know our students will do it. Yes, Joe. Not just for me, but for a lot of people here, I just come to my attention just recently that Chester schools have had Chinese for a few years, mm -hmm. sounds to me. Long Valley doesn't have at all. Okay. Are you trying to integrate that program into the lower levels or no? Right. I'll, I'll, um, Chester has had Chinese, <coughs> Mendon Township, and Mendon Borough. They all <coughs> offer it in a different manner, okay? They all have a little bit different time frames and those kinds of things and uh, Washington Township has not. This is why we came, up, uh, uh, we, came up, we came out with the course in the language and culture. That was primarily, though it could be for students who were taking a second, uh, you know, second or third language at the high school, but it's really also to address the needs of the students at, Was at uh, Washington Township. Right. So we would plan that the teacher would be part-time, would, uh, would be shared time between the two buildings. 
Um, one thing that also came up at CAB, we're not talking about getting rid of any other world language or any other world language teacher. This is in addition to. Okay, so we're, we're planning kind of two and three, you know, but I don't know, two sections at one building and three at the other. Um, and there's a strong cohort coming from the middle schools. About uh, Today I found out it might be uh, about 36 students or possibly even more coming into the Chinese program that they've already had Chinese. So. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you, Alice. Thanks for all your work on this. Uh, now we're going to uh, meet our new teachers. And I know Mackie's over here to lead us through that. Good evening, everybody. I, uh, it's my pleasure tonight to introduce our, our first year teachers. I really think that my first year of teaching was in 1988, and I still remember every student, um, every problem, every success. It's just it, it really gets etched into your brain that first year. It's such a, such a challenge. And I think that um, even for the most <laughs> talented and confident uh, teacher, you, you get kind of shaken in that first year, uh, just a touch. But I, I think I'm really proud um, of this group. I Honestly, I really mean this. This is about as dedicated a group of teachers as I've seen uh, come into this system, and talented as well. And I feel very lucky to work with them, and I think this district and the kids here are very lucky too. Uh, they're already making a, an immediate impact. So uh, one of the teachers said to me, uh, did you plan this uh, with the cameras and everything? And no, um, <laughs> I, I wish I had that kind of talent. But, um, but what I would like, if you, if you could just take it, I didn't realize uh, we'd have mics and such, but if you could just stand up where you are and introduce yourself, name where you teach, subject, and, and a little bit of background, and we'll go right down here, and then, not Linda, or, or Mr. Ryan, and then from the second row. So Anne, could you start us off, please? Hello, I'm Augustine. I'm a special ed teacher here at Mendham High School. I'm actually returning to Mendham. I taught here from September of 2000 till December of 2002 when I had my first child, and I stayed home for a few years, and I was lucky enough to come back as a maternity <coughs> replacement in spring of 2010, and now um, to have filled the opening uh, recently uh, available so that I will be back to the track and I'm thrilled to be back. I'm so happy to be back in the district and back in the school and glad to be here. Buenas noches. <laughs> um, um, my name is Alfredo Varela. I teach Spanish at Menlo High School. Um, I've taught for uh, nine years in uh, another district in Burton County, uh, Glen Rock. High school. Um, what attracted me most to the school was um, just how great it was um, on paper and coming to visit last year. So I'm thrilled to be here. Hello, my name is Victoria Robb. Uh, I teach currently history at Westmark Central High School, but I also did my student teaching and took over for a maternity leave replacement May and June at Mendham High School. So I've kind of had experience in both districts. Um, Sorry. And I'm really excited to continue working here and being a part of this district. Hello, I'm Guinevere Hedden. I teach English at Central. I am taking over for Nicole Howell in a maternity replacement for this year. Um, I graduated from the College of New Jersey with bachelor's, and then last year I taught in South Jersey at one of the regional. I taught English for maternity leave. So this is my second time around and my second district, but I love it and it's so warm and wonderful and I really thank you for the opportunity. Hi, I'm Jeff Hogan. I teach English and Drama over at Westmore Central. I went to Marist College for my undergrad, studied communications, went to Drew University for my master's in teaching English and theater, and I absolutely love it. We actually just had auditions tonight for My Fair Lady, come out and see it in March. <laughs> thank you, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, Chief Fun, you got to be <laughs> <coughs> My name is Brett Ressler, recent graduate of the College of New Jersey down in Ewing. Um, I teach here at Menham High School of Health, Physical Education, and Driver's Ed, and also a uh, coach on the side as well as football and lacrosse. I'm uh, just very happy to be here. It's a great place to have nothing but great experience. So. I'm Andrew Palmer. I went to the Pennsylvania State University, majored in physics. I'm here at Menham teaching physics, and uh, I also advise the robotics club. Very proud of our achievements there. Looking for some more this weekend. I'm also volunteering with the Men in Black a cappella group and thoroughly enjoying my time here at Mendon. Thank you. Hi, 
I am Frances Bodie. I graduated from the College of New Jersey in May. Um, I teach at Mendham also. I teach technology applications and digital video. And I'm also one of the advisors for the Robotics Club. Um, very excited. Uh, this upcoming weekend we have a new competition. And we're looking to get the two other teams qualified. And I just can't explain how um, amazing this experience has been. It's my first teaching experience here. It's a very welcoming district. And uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Hola, I'm uh, Susanna Lopez. I am a first year Spanish teacher. I went to Rutgers for my bachelor's in communication. And then I got my post baccalaureate in uh, Spanish education at King University. And I'm really, really excited to be doing what I love in such an amazing district. And I thank you all for the opportunity. Hi, my name is Greg Race. I teach chemistry and also coach freshman basketball here at Menden High School. I graduated from Marist College in 2008 with a degree in biochemistry. I worked at Hanover Park High School as a chemistry teacher for two and a half years. And now I'm here and I couldn't be happier. So thanks for having me. Are there any questions? <laughs> So we're going to take a break, correct? We're gonna, yes, Short we're going to take a, a, about a 10-minute break, and, and we can all meet the, okay. meet the teachers. <laughs> Thank you. So, thanks. At this time, we will open to the public. If you have a question or comment, please state your name and town. Limit your questions or comments to five minutes or less, and please use the podium with the microphone. Yes, in the back. Uh, Jeff Emery. Can you, uh, can you come up first, please? Thank you. Thank you. Slide check. Well, um, I don't have my reading glasses. I may have a little trouble with this. Um, I have a statement, and uh, I have some questions, but I may reserve the questions until later. The resignation of Dr. Anthony D. Batista is the final verse of a sad chapter in the history of the West Morris Regional High School District. A district once heralded for its academic excellence and innovation has slowly evolved into a district more interested in politics thank you, than education. And over the last few months, these politics have turned into the politics of personal destruction. A handful of individuals have taken great pleasure in attempting to smear the names and contributions of individuals associated with the Board of Education. First, Jim Johnson of Chester, whose recall petition had far more publicity than it did actual names. Jackie Schramm of Mendham Borough, whose recall attempt fizzled out before it even cleared the launching pad. And now Dr. DiBattista. The district's reputation has been damaged by the continued false claims from CBS and its followers that the district is slipping academically, that the amount apportioned to each school is tilted towards Westmore is central, and that the board members from Washington Township run Mendham High School. Meanwhile, board member Jamie Button has repeatedly announced that following a meeting with the governor and commissioner of education, he's been promised funding for a study, a claim that has been shown to be patently false. This nonsense is counterproductive to the best interests of the taxpayers and needs to stop now. With the new pay scale for superintendents, it'll be a challenge to find a candidate who will have the qualifications necessary to maintain the standards that we've all become used to. And with a district in upheaval, the task will be even more difficult. There are a number of superintendents become, positions becoming available, and the better candidates will not want to waste their time working in a political war zone like this. Taxpayers in the regional district are faced with two choices. They can try to bring about the changes that they seek by working together as five towns for the common good of each. Or they can take the CBS approach and bring about change by destroying the district entirely. Ladies and gentlemen, the choice on how we move forward in this district is up to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Phil Nicolosi, Westmore Central High School history teacher. Uh, I've been asked to read an email that I received from uh, Jeff DeLolo, who is uh, currently volunteering as a principal and a teacher in Copila Valley School, uh, which is in Nepal, founded and built by former Westmore's Mendham student, Maggie Doyne. 
Uh, Jeff writes, it is with great sadness and regret that I read Dr. Anthony DiBattista's resignation from the position of superintendent from our district. This, in my opinion, is a premature end to a very influential and impactful career here at West Morris Regional. Dr. DiBattista has been a major cornerstone of so many successes and educational triumphs as both a teacher and an administrator. His personal mentorship and commitment to professionalism have shaped my philosophy of education, strengthened my teaching practices, and empowered as well as challenged me to grow as an educator. I shudder to think that a few agenda-driven members of our community could have influenced such an untimely retirement. These individuals certainly do not speak on behalf of the communities that I have personally served over the past many years. As I write this brief note, I am reminded of the numerous occasions during this year that I have put my acquired techniques, learned experience, expertise, and proficiencies to use here in Nepal. All of these measures have been directly related to the environment and learning community that Dr. DiBattista has fostered here in our district. Here too, there are a few motivated by conspiring self-interest look to further their agenda that has little or nothing to do with a dedication to the well-being of students or to the furthering of a learning community. Here too, there are those who use the guise of such noble motivations as a disguise for ulterior motives that are singularly focused or on finances and personal attacks. It is exactly these ulterior motivations that have bled our district of what was once a community focused above all on the growth and strengthening of our students in every way. I fear the district I will return to will not be the one I left. To you, Dr. DiBattista, many thanks for you for more than three decades of commitment to helping the West Morris Regional High School District uh, grow into a thriving community of learners, a place where have... Uh, where I have been honored to work under your leadership. I hope we are able to continue to carry the torch you have passed to us. You will be tremendously missed by myself and countless others. Sincerely, Jeff DeLolo, Principal, Kapila Valley High School in Nepal. <clears throat> On a more personal note, uh, Dr. DiBattista, I want to thank you for the dedication uh, to this district, its teachers, its students. And I remember when I first arrived in this district 17 years ago, some of the veteran staff over at Westmore Central told me if I want to be a great teacher to go talk to Dr. DiBattista. I can never aspire to have the effect that you've had on your students nor this district. Uh, your professionalism has always reflected what was best practice, what was best for students, and it was always about education. So no matter what you've done for this district, you've done it with professionalism and class. Thank you. Muscatello, assistant principal, Westmore Central High School. A um, little on the older side, okay, and sometimes history has its benefits. Uh, sitting back and reflecting on what I considered was terrible news to hear of Dr. DiPatista's uh, retirement, early retirement, uh, I said it was before his time. In reflecting back, I realized I've worked for every superintendent this district had with the exception of one. That was Mr. Saunders, I did not work for him. But starting with Mr. Connolly, all the way up through, I've worked for every superintendent. With that comes a picture of what a superintendent is. I was able to see in reflection, everyone was a little bit different. Everyone had some goals in mind. Everyone's style with working with people was, was a little different. Some superintendents never left their office. They covered everything from their office. God only knows what would happen if they ever had email. But at that time, there wasn't any email, and they never left their office. The one thing I must say about Dr. DiPatista, he was always there, always. When you were in your classroom, Anthony was there. When you were in the middle of a construction project, Anthony was there. Anthony knew where the rooms were. There were some superintendents I know couldn't tell you where the cafeteria was. They had no idea. But Anthony knew 
right from the beginning where everything was. He was an administrator's superintendent. Anthony was involved with everything you did, always in contact, always there to help you. As an acting principal, I had several tragedies to contend with. When I held those meetings at 7 o'clock in the morning, Anthony was there. When I had to go through a budget crisis and suffered through and making some hard decisions, they were not done on the spur of the moment. Anthony had the foresight to take the time and go through and plan it out so we weren't stuck behind the eight ball. The words, I heard it spoken before just by my colleague Phil, the true professional. To sit here and to realize that this district, through the selfishness of some individuals, has caused us to be derailed from our educational mission. You know, it only takes a small group of people to railroad something like we have here tonight if good men and good women don't stand up. And I can't believe for the life of me that the people from the Chesters and Mendham's can't see that this district is on a collision course. We're, we're, we're getting set to blow up and that can't happen to this premier district. We have people here who are fighting their own agendas. I agree, tax allocation was a problem years ago. It was a problem in 1972. It was a problem when Mount Olive deregionalized. It was, <clears throat> and people talked about it for a long, long time. It took Dr. DiPatista to put together a summit where he got all the parties involved, all the boards of education, all the mayors, and guess what? There's a solution on the way. We worked hard, they're working hard to come up with a solution. They're meeting with senators and legislators. That's progress. From this point on, the rest of this, what's going on needs to stop and we need to get back on, on target. If you look out here to all these people standing here, it's wasted energy. We should be talking about curriculum review. We should be talking about facilities. We should be talking about what's best for our kids. We should be pounding ourselves on the back for the premier district that we are, instead of fighting tooth and nail here, trying to keep ourselves on, on an even keel. It is with great remorse that I have to say goodbye to Anthony. You know, he has been a true leader for us, always there, always working for us. And some of that just comes from being the educator that he is. And we just can't lose sight, the true professional, but the true educator. Some people spoke here about how much it's meant to him. I must tell you, my tenure as an administrator, going through several superintendents, there was no better superintendent than Anthony. And I could say that because I experienced them. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Mike Riley, a uh, former proud member of uh, the district for over 17 years uh, and a fortunate principal of Westmore Central High School and I retired in 2009 after 40 years as a high school educator. In my years here at the district, I had the really good fortune to work with three exceptional superintendents who were educators first and foremost, Dr. Judy Ferguson, Dr. Henry Kiernan, and currently Dr. Anthony D. Batista. And what I'd like to do tonight is just share with you and celebrate with you, you know, some of the 20 years experience I've had with Anthony, because I first met him uh, at a board, a uh, curriculum advisory board meeting, which we were both members, all right? These 20 years of experience with Anthony for me have really been filled with growth, both for me as a person and as an educator because I experienced the dedication and the commitment of a true educator. Anthony's heart and soul goes into his everyday actions. His sense of selfless commitment was always inspiring to me. He was always available 24 seven for me in relation to young people, especially to staff, teachers, parents, curriculum issues, and any and all other educational issues. What always struck me was Anthony's willingness to give selflessly of his time, his effort, and his energy. We often exchange insights on current educational ideas and research, 
with the focus of always trying to improve either the educational opportunities and programs for young people, the professional development of teachers, the infusion of technology into teaching strategies, improved communication with parents, <coughs> and the spectrum and range of all activities and athletic programs for young people. See, Anthony always has a passion for ensuring and striving for educational excellence. Uh, he was instrumental with Henry and with humility, myself, in initiating the IB program. He, his efforts made sure we had the history grants that really stimulated our teaching profession in the area of history presentations and teaching strategies. Our relationship with the Gilda Lerman Institute in New York was always inspiring for me. And Anthony and I went up and we met Frederick Douglass's principal, Frederick Douglass Academy's principal, and also spent a day with Professor Clement Price at the History School in Newark. These are decisions that were made, I think, by a, a, a really a true educator. And what I'd like to do is just share some thoughts just on an educator's way of life. And as I do this, try to think of putting where I say educator or education, <coughs> substitute Anthony's name. The education profession, in essence, rests on an incorruptible, principled sense of genuine, selfless service to young people. Such a foundational attitude goes well de beyond defining one's work as a mere job. Service to young people reflects an educator's way of life. One works to meet the needs of others. An educator serves to enhance the growth of young people. Our way of life represents a vital profession that truly serves the public in a genuinely giving way. The educator, the teacher, always allows amazing op possibilities to occur. By using positive strategies in the classroom, they transform the classroom into creative environments for learning. It's always in the process of encouraging <laughs> approaches that unlock unknown treasures within young people. Its support structure assists students to discover and to create their own insights and understandings. The nobility of our profession leads one to develop a covenant, a sacred bond of commitment to one's young people. Our profession truly is a covenant of devotion, a covenant of giving, a covenant of caring. Our profession is immersed, immersed in the world of idealism. Its fabric inspires. For through the sharing of knowledge and through dialogues exploring the world of ideas, Minds are opened up to new insights, and teachers allow personal understanding to blossom. Teaching, education spawns opportunities that unleash the talents from which a world of unknown, wonderful possibilities emerge for young people, for teachers, for families. I could go on and list a, a, a legend or of Anthony's legacy, but I guess the way to best summarize it is, I'll just share a thought that I, I shared at, at my beloved friend Gill's retirement last week. And that is, you know, one of the true measures of an educator's effectiveness rests on assessing whether the lives of others are better, more fulfilled, and more meaningful because of his or her efforts as a teacher or a leader. I know personally that I have, could never have been the principal, without the assistance of men like Anthony, teaches at, in our school the support of the board. And, you know, for me, I just wanted to share and celebrate with you what Anthony has meant to me as an educator. And to just emphasize the nobility of our profession and the nobility of his commitment and his dedication and his efforts. You know, I'm forever grateful to know you as a friend as a fellow educator, as one who is caring, dedicated, and commitment. You continue to inspire me, and I thank you for your commitment.
Good evening. My name is Lucy Monahan from Mendenboro. We've heard some eloquent words, and I certainly appreciate that and the words that were spoken here this evening. But what I also uh, heard was the emotion underneath it, which has brought me to the podium. I did not have a statement, but what I would like to say is this. I'm very happy that people are involved, and I am a person uh, that is community-based and passionate about being involved in the community. So I would urge, with all due respect, that our citizens continue to be involved uh, in their schools, in their community, in whatever form or fashion. However, I would ask that we take the time and the due diligence when we come together, uh, at, whether it be at a meeting or a community affair, and take the time to do our homework. Um, I'm not one for patience, anyone who knows me, and uh, things move very slowly, and that's always been a struggle for me. But there are so many layers to every different component of education in meetings and the state mandates and our community, and I can go on and on. And it has taken me, I'm, I've been in the borough now 20 years, and every day is a new learning experience for myself on all the different aspects. So in the future, I ask that people continue to come to be involved, but use uh, this time to educate themselves and to bring respect with one another when we're dealing with people and to move forward and, and have a consensus. And I, I would just like to say I've been involved with the district on many levels with Anthony and the board, and uh, I would also like to conclude by saying thank you for everything that you have done and uh, best wishes. Thank you. Looks like somebody else is making their way up. Mr. Nadi. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. John Nadi, uh, ex board member. 18 years, president for five. Uh, on the board when we hired Judy, on the board when we hired Henry Kiernan, on the board when we hired you, Dr. Di Batista, we have done some great things in those 18 years. Uh, Dr. Riley spoke of some of them, IB, how, many, how much money and grants that we received from your hard work <coughs> that helped the district. Um, the educational philosophy, that was unbelievable. We did have some arguments now and then when I told you to shut your door once in a while and let somebody else handle a problem instead of you having to handle all the problems. I can remember the first year you were the superintendent and we were down in Atlantic City and there was a snowstorm in October and you were on the phone constantly trying to put things together up here in Morris County. Um, you have done some great things. After probably the last couple of years, I've seen things slow down. Yeah, we have some situation with the state and money. But even when we had hard times and you were the superintendent, you always had a vision to succeed. When we worked on the construction project and we had a problem finishing the project, you were the one that stood in the middle of the room, and a lot of the board members that might be in the room right now remember you putting down that we will accomplish our goal line by line. You were the driving force. We had a great board, worked hard together, but you were the driving force. When I read in the paper that you were going to retire early, and I read the article, as I know you being a professional, and everything you do, and I read the one statement saying that politics were not involved. In my heart, I don't believe that. I think you would still be here for another year or so before you retired. And in my heart, I appreciate everything you've done for this district, but I also know that <clears throat> I feel politics were involved, and I wish you the best of luck. Anna Astrojad in Mendham Township. I'm very sad to stand here today. 
Four years ago, I convinced my family to move from a very bad school situation and move to a better place. I spent a good year researching and trying to find the best school in the state of New Jersey. I researched and researched, and uh, I know from experience that a key factor is the person at the top, the one that is running the show, the superintendent. So that weighed heavily, heavily on my decision. When I started reading about Dr. D. Batista, I felt that this was an honorable man with a high moral compass, obviously very intelligent, and had the best, the student's best interests at heart. So I ripped my kids from their friends and moved out to the country to what I felt was the best school in New Jersey. Little did I know that this beautiful little town called Mendham Township had just voted in a bully onto the board. Yes, a bully. The worst kind of bully. What are the chances of that fate? Incredible. I'm going to quote now the state. These are the new, uh, the new uh, statutes here. Signed in January 2011. Added requirements. Harassment, intimidation, or bullying means any gesture, any written verbal or physical act, or any electronic communication, whether it be single incident or series of incidents, that substantially disrupts or interferes with the orderly operation of the school. Now, you come to the board meetings for the past year, and it's like a battlefield. A battlefield which I don't appreciate. It also says, or if it creates a hostile educational environment, which is what it has been since I've been here. Now, to quote the West Morris Regional High School policy on harassment and intimidation, which is right on the cover page when you open up the website, it says, quote, since students operable words, learn by example. School administrators, faculty, staff, and volunteers are required, whereas you should have added board members, and I, I request that you put in board members, are required to demonstrate appropriate behavior, treating others with civility and respect, and refusing to tolerate harassment, intimidation, or bullying. Then it goes on to say, the standards of character education are an essential component of the West Morris Regional High School District's Code of Conduct. The board believes that with the appropriate infusion of character education into the school curriculum, modeling of appropriate behavior by adults, support and assistance of students in school, the community and home, our students will achieve the above standards of character education. Now I ask you, board members, how are our students supposed to learn about character education when they are watching a board member bully the board? How? And force out a man of high integrity who's going to be irreplaceable. Irreplaceable. How's that? So the buck stops with the board. And I wish the board would step up and not tolerate this any longer. Thank you. Franklin, Chester Township. Um, this is actually addressing um, the curriculum, the academic curriculum for the Chinese program. Um, currently at the Black River Middle School, which I have an eighth grader, um, they have a high performing population that is currently taking Chinese. And over the last three years, they have gone through a very robust language program. Um, and I want to thank Dr. Van Mort and Mr. Mullen, really, for instituting that over at Chester. Um, the students currently are demonstrating the knowledge of speaking the language, not only with the teacher, but their own peers. They currently write characters, 
and they're really assessed on their tone through email recording. So I think we have a very, very robust program over at Black River, and my, my concerns really lie with the program that's going to be offered to them as freshmen come September of 2012. Um, based on the presentation that Dr. Hunter gave today and based on what I heard, um, it's my understanding that Chinese too, if you will, will not be offered to um, the incoming freshman class. As if, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's my understanding though that a French, if you are a French student, you have the ability to take French too as an incoming freshman, or if you want to take Spanish, you can take Spanish too. Um, we just, I personally have some concerns. Um, I am concerned. Um, again, these are a high performing group of students. Um, you know, Chinese is a very difficult class. And I think overall these students have done very well over the last three years. Um, I'm concerned if they select the Chinese one class, which I do believe they would be eligible for, could it impact them three years down the road in terms of um, class rank, their student ranking, their GPA? Um, uh, those are type, some of the concerns that I have. Um, is there a plan to give a greater weight um, if Chinese is not going to be laid out the same way as French or Spanish? Um, I mean, is there a way that maybe a placement assessment could be offered to these students that are coming in? So these are just some concerns and some things I would really um, recommend that the board considers going forward. I do realize that we have, we are the pilot population. And as with anything, I realize there's new trails that need to be blazed. But as I said, um, I personally, and I can't speak for my other parents from Black River, but I think they would all agree with me that we're very pleased and we're very proud of the program that has been put together there. And we just want to ensure that our children are being challenged to the best of their ability and that they are going to be recognized for all their hard work four years from when they graduate. Thank you. Peter Dumovic, uh, Mendham Township. Um, a comment um, to Dr. DeBattista and then a comment to the board. Um, most importantly to Dr. DeBattista, as a Mendham Township taxpayer and as a parent of two boys who go to Mendham High School, I want to applaud and thank you for your efforts and your accomplishments that I've seen personally here at Mendham. Hi, I think you can and should be proud of those accomplishments and I wish you the very, very best going forward. To the board, um, you have um, a task now in front of you, arguably one of the most important tasks of hiring another chief education officer for the district, a critical position as we all know. And I would just suggest to you that you look to the qualities and to uh, what Dr. DeBattista offered in terms of that um, basis, if you will, and I wish and hope that you find candidates that can meet and exceed that. I think as we move forward, there's an opportunity. We have a terrific district. We heard from teachers and educators tonight about a good district, a great district. Uh, people have come here for that, especially teachers and certainly many of us as residents. Um, I think we should set goals that exceed what we have to date. We are great in terms of our education. That doesn't mean that we can't improve from that. So I wish you well as you seek those candidates, and I hope and expect that the board involves the community in that process as you move forward to identify a new superintendent. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, yes. Kelly Liang from Chester Township. I just wanted to echo the um, sentiments that were um, relayed by Joanne Franklin regarding the Chinese program. And my concerns also revolve around how the program will um, accommodate the students who enter as ninth graders next year and whether or not they will get credit, if you will, for being you know, in what we consider somewhat advanced relative to some of the other um, level one classes that are being offered and if there's any accommodations that can be made as we move the program forward in order to accommodate that, such as a Chinese two honors level or something commensurate with that or recognition later on, if that's so appropriate. Thank you. Okay. 
Any other questions or comments from the public? If there are none others at this time, I'll close to the public. We'll move on with our agenda. There will be another opportunity later in the meeting, though. Can I have a um, somebody move consent agenda? I'm sorry. Can I have items to be removed from the consent agenda? Marsha, can I start with you? Um, business Ops 10. Business Ops 10. Okay. Jamie? I don't have any. Joe? Thank you. Well, good. Very good. Uh, I'm going to remove Business Ops 4 just because everybody uh, who received payment in this bill list needs to abstain. And Personnel 1 and 2. Uh, program 2. Okay. John? Personnel 1. Okay. Jackie? Okay. <clears throat> and I have uh, consent agenda number two. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Jackie? Second? Second. Thank you, Tom. All in favor? Can we have discussion on that? Discussion? Not on number two. No. You have discussion on the items that are, are pulled from the consent okay. agenda. Okay. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstention? Uh, business ops number four. May I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Marsha. Second? Second. Thank you, Jamie. Discussion? Just uh, for your information, I had the bill list. I checked it, and it was all uh, uh, to my satisfaction. Any other discussion? Yeah. Uh, forgive me if I'm a little behind. Are we all abstaining from voting on the bill list since we're being reimbursed? All you have to abstain from is your line, your item. Okay, because I mean, I did just from the payment to yourself. Okay, I just did a little bit of research, and there is a, a procedure that says the board is allowed to vote on a motion where everyone is benefiting when something like a convention expense is being determined. So. I don't think we have to abstain. And I just lost my place because I thought I wasn't going to be able to do it. But That would be at your discretion. Um, it's also uh, pretty standard practice to abstain just to um, be certain that you're not voting on something. Okay. Well, I'm just going to, it's, uh, you know, page 132 in parliamentary procedure. It says, a member may vote on a question involving the whole organization when others are equally affected by the vote even though the member has a direct personal or financial interest. For example, every member has the right to vote on a motion that determines convention expenses to be paid to delegates by the organization. So, And, and you are voting on that. You're just abstaining. It, well, it, you have the option of abstaining from the payment to you. Not everybody was being... Um, I don't think you had a reimbursement for, no, for but on convention. You had a reimbursement for fingerprinting. Right. That, that's at your discretion. Any other questions? Okay. Jim? I want to abstain from check number 1000265149 for the conference reimbursement. Mary, I don't know my check number, but I'd like to abstain I'll, from, I'll put them in. from my check for mm -hmm. convention reimbursement as well. As would I. Also. So, Joe, no. Jackie, John, Tom, <coughs> Dave, Jim. We had and six members here. No, and I have three more in the office. Oh, you do? Okay. I have one more. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions other than those mentioned? Uh, business ops number 10 on page 3. I have a motion. So moved. Second? Second. Thank you. Discussion. Um, Doug, could you just explain why or what that is for, you know, around $1,400? for the weather works. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll explain and, that. And, and here's, here's just my uh, first reaction when I read that. I thought, wow, you know, you could pay 40 bucks and, and get the same 
what I would look at from weather.com. So what are we getting for $1,400 that, you know, a 40-month uh, subscription would not give us? If I've had any success in calling snow days in the past, it's been in part due to WeatherWorks, because what we get in addition to weather.com is that I begin calling them at 3.30 in the morning, and I begin asking them, what's it looking like on Schoolies Mountain? What's it looking like specifically in Jockey Hollow? And they give me those answers. Then I call every constituent superintendent, and we begin negotiating. And I continue to call them at 4 in the morning, and I call them again if there's a delayed opening to see if the ice conditions have changed by 7 in the, seven in the morning when I need to make that change, if we're then having another delayed opening or closing. In addition to that, we call them during graduation. We call them for sporting events. We call them with things regarding lightning. And I can say to you that for me, $1,390 has, has essentially resulted in safety for our students. It's a personalized weather service where they're able to localize those questions. Be since they're located in Hackettstown? Or? Yeah. They're, they're a, like a micro. They can do micro forecasting. They've been able to call cells floating over you know, our buildings during graduation one year. They called an exact time that we could, could delay graduation till, and, and by darn it worked. I very much recommend continuing it. It seems as if it's, it's really been good value for the district. The other part of that is remember that at, at 4 in the morning to make that call, it's a call that's made over a 110-square-mile area from School of Mountain to Jockey Hollow, and that's a difficult call at times. They've really been able to help. I have a question. Yes. Do other school districts do use it? In this yes, time? actually, our constituent K-8s, I believe that th four, four of them use it. Uh, three or four of them use it. We all call at the same time. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, program number two on page four. May I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Jackie. Second? Second. Thank you, Jim. Discussion? <coughs> Uh, when I read the report, I saw that there were uh, 74 transfers into our district. Yes. These are all new students that we've received since September. The number that I got since September in terms of entering were 34 new and unanticipated. And that was the number that I'd gotten from guidance. So I can't reconcile what the nursing services have used versus what I've gotten from guidance. But I do know that it's been a much larger number than in, in the past. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Sorry, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Sadly, may I have a motion for personnel number one? So moved. Second. John. Thank you, Dave. Discussion. With regrets and sincere thanks for over three decades of service to the district. Anthony, you have positively affected the quality of our educational system for the, last, for the past 34 years. We could not have become the educational powerhouse we are without your dedication and leadership. Thank you for all you have given to our students, their families, and our communities. West Morris Regional will truly miss your presence. Best wishes for your future, where I'm sure you will continue to be an inspirational and visionary educator. If I could not accept this resignation, I would be the first to make that motion, but since you have requested it, unfortunately, I will have to abide by your wishes. Thank you. Any other? I'd just like to say that I'm very sorry that we're going to be losing such a gifted educator. You're somebody who's impacted thousands of kids in the classroom and thousands more as an administrator. Through your leadership, we've had initiatives like the IB program. You've expanded it to the largest in the state and one of the, the most 
uh, looked after in the country for best practices. Um, you've created sister school relationships. You've brought in the Teaching American History $1.1 million in grant money for professional development. You've um, done one book, The Rotating Schedule. I mean, the list is endless. You've overseen the lar largest construction project in the district's history. You um, have passed the, the state monitoring, led our, our district to the, through the Q, sorry, CUSAC monitoring with accolades as one of the, the best in the county and probably one of the best in the state. You've managed the alignment of the building budgets uh, through a five-year plan, and you did that in three years. Um, your leadership in, in your associations has brought insight and value to our district, and you've done all of this while overseeing the largest budget cuts in our history. Um, your open door policy for parents, teachers, and administrators is a hallmark of your tenure here. And I'd just like to thank you. We're very grateful for your leadership and um, your expertise, and I'm confident that wherever you go next, you'll bring as much value to them as you've brought here. Thank you very much. Like Jim, I'd love to abstain, but Jackie. I just want to add, I want to thank you for your patience and your diplomacy and the example you've set. Thank you very much. Are there any other comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? I have a motion for number two in personnel. So moved. Thank you, Jim. Second. Second. Thank you, Marcia. Discussion? I'd just like to say with regret. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> That concludes the consent agenda. We are on to old business. Yeah, old, old yeah business. I, just, I just want to make the board uh, aware <clears throat> we're working on updating the long range facility plan. And next month, uh, what I hope to have in front of you is a document that you'll be able to review. Uh, the long range facility plan identifies uh, um, primarily. Um, maintenance projects that we have uh, within our district uh, all the way from uh, you know the rooftops to the to the athletic fields uh, and, and that it'll be inclusive of that so you need to see that I need your approval on it in order to submit it to the state and the the dollars that we've identified are what um, govern how many dollars can be set aside in our capital reserve account so uh, I just want you to be uh, aware that that's coming and <clears throat> that uh, you'll be receiving um, that document shortly Did you have another item? I'm going to pass. Okay. All right. Is there any other old business? Jackie? I guess this would be old business. Um, I noticed that in our minutes, we're not um, making note of uh, the public speakers, because the last two meetings we've had, I think, 30 minutes devoted to open to the public and 45 minutes but we haven't noted how many people spoke um, or, who, or who did. I thought I was going to get away with it. So um, is this a, a change, a, con a, a conscious change we're making? Within, within the minutes, um, what, what we're re required to uh, record are your actions, you know, the actions that you take, which are, are laid out in the agenda. The recording of, you know, um, individuals attending a board meeting is not a requirement. We just have, have chosen not to do it because it's become uh, voluminous over the last several months. And, and that's, that was just a decision that we made internally since it's not a legal requirement that we, we chose not to uh, continue to address it. We can if you want to. It, it, it's going to take more effort on our part, though, to make sure that we record all that information. Well, would it make sense to mention that there were, say, 20 speakers? and the main topics were 
you know, ABC, whatever. If you want to leave that up to me to decide what the main topics were, you know, because that's, that's what, it, it, <laughs> what, what I think is important and what others may right. think important is going to be different. Okay. But I'd be glad to report how many people are here, as many as we possibly can, and how many speak. We could, we could address that and where they're from, uh, but not necessarily uh, the content is, right. um, again, discretionary, I think. Right. I mean, we can summarize the topics. Okay. So, because sometimes that provides the gist of the meeting. Okay. Especially when you use a consent agenda. Okay. We'll do that. Okay. Any other? Okay. Thank you, Jackie. Any other old business? All right. Then on to new business. Um, the next step in, in um, having to accept a retirement notice is uh, moving on to the superintendent search process. I would... Um, Knowing that, that uh, Dr. DiBattista's last day will be February 29th, I would like to start the process. Um, there certainly are, are no guarantees that it, that it will be completed by the time he leaves, but at least we can begin and see where, where, where we can get and, um, and see if we can, you know, on the off chance that there is a possibility, it would be nice to have time to transition, if, if that's possible. Um, and in that end, I would suggest that we advertise as soon as possible to begin the process of collecting <coughs> resumes. How soon could that be? Uh, we can advertise uh, in this Sunday Star Ledger. What are we advertising for? Superintendent. Sure. <laughs> or a replacement? A replacement. I spoke to Joanne Boren. Uh, she has 17 pages of interims. She said it's it's easy to get an interim, so um, we should probably start with the search, and then then we can always go back and get an interim if we need one. Is, is the interim subject to the new superintendent salary guides? They are. They would uh, they would be paid one two hundred and sixtieth on a per diem. Yes. On a per diem of the of the cap for our district, which I believe is one fifty seven five. One fifty five. One fifty five. Well, why would it have to be at the cap? Because that's the state statute. It couldn't be below the cap. I thought the cap put the maximum. Oh, for, you want yes, yes. You could if you can find an interim who will work for below. I believe they all work for the for the cap. We got 17 pages worth. I, I believe I, I can double check with Joanne, but I believe that they all um, get paid based on the size of the district. And do you have? or maybe Anthony knows more, as these districts are getting new superintendents under the, that are subject to the cap, mm -hmm. is it difficult, or how many, I know Parsippany ran into trouble when they renewed their contract at higher rate, but how many districts have filled a superintendent position with the cap in place? Every district Every that's district. filled a superintendent position since the caps came into place had to do so under the caps. Right, so has it been any in more, I mean, do we have any history of how it? There was just a hire in Madison. There will be a hire in Chatham. I know I uh, received a call from Tewksbury. I know Clinton is looking, and they're all, uh, I believe, Mendham Borough is beginning. And, all and Burners. And Burners, and they're all under, you know, or at the cap. The other decision? Yes. I also believe that we. Sorry. I also believe that we should uh, start a superintendent search, and if that fails, then I think we can quickly find a interim. So at that thought, I think we should advertise also this weekend in uh, the Star Ledger. When we came with Steve, where else did we look at when, when Steve came as a principal? Which, which other venues? Yeah. Education Week. Uh, we, we used Education Week to advertise and reach outside of the state. Right. Um, with the caps in place, there are, are fewer people who are willing to come to the state. Although as a board, you, you have time. If you would like right. to also use Ed Week, um, I could make sure that happens. Okay. If everybody's interested in that. Yes, no? How often does that come out? Every two weeks. 
Education by week. <laughs> <laughs> and how uh, soon would it come out with the holidays upon us? Realistically, how soon would we get something in there? And I can't answer yeah, that. Don't know. Any other spots you would look at, we should look at? Yes, you can put it on um, NewJerseySchoolJobs.com. So there, there are internet sites that we belong to that, in fact, we use uh, every new hire that comes to the district. I ask them how they found out about it, and they all say the internet. Um, so certainly we can do that, and we can do the Star Ledger if you wish. Would be smart. Okay. Uh, the other thing that we need to consider is if we would like to um, hire a consultant to screen resumes and do reference checks. Have we done that in the past? Yes, we have. When did we, we hire uh, Anthony or <coughs> just for superintendents? No, we, did not, we did not do it when we hired Anthony. He was um, in the district and he was put in, in the job as an acting for a few months and then, then offered the job. As, as the uh, superintendent. We did do it when we hired Mr. Ryan as principal at Central. Kristen, what yes. would be the advantages of using a consultant? Uh, a consultant can help you um, with screening the resumes. They, um, uh, they can do some <coughs> board training if the board needs it in, in uh, um, a closed interview process. They can um, set up the interviews, and then they can um, check references for you. They can do more than that for additional fees, but I think most of this board has been through the process pretty recently. Mm -hmm. We probably don't need a lot more than that. What was the approximate cost? For that level of service that I just described, um, it's around $2,000. The, the more detailed process is about 6,500. <clears throat> is it possible to use Bill Liberera? Uh We consulted him, talked to him. He is not available at this time. He did give us another recommendation, though. Um, a gentleman, Richard uh, Fyander, who is a former superintendent in Summit, former president of NJASA, the Superintendents Association. Um, he's currently doing a search for Clinton Township. He's, um, I, he's doing one other search. I know Mendenboro has used him in the past for other searches for their principal hires. Um, he came very highly recommended. Since we've had some uh, history with Bill, did he say why we're, uh, he's, he's unavailable? Anthony, you spoke with him. He, uh, I think he ha had a conflict. Yeah, he um, he was very busy and chose not to do this. So, if you're all okay with going ahead and advertising this week, and then the only other decision is if we would like to hire um, Richard Fyander to assist us with the, those aspects of the search. We make that decision now? Mm-hmm, yes. Do we need a motion? We can, that would probably be advisable, Doug. Yeah, put a motion on the table and then you can discuss it. <clears throat> would you like to make a motion? I'll make a motion <laughs> to hire the consultant, Richard Fyander. Do I have a second? A second. Thank you, Marcia. Does Richard have a, um, I'm assuming he's probably gathered a list together that he could work <coughs> with for other districts, right? For other districts, right. Not for us, because Obviously, we haven't hired we haven't him. Haven't but spoken yes. him yet. Yeah. yeah, isn't his wife, Dr. Fyander, who used to be superintendent of Chester, I believe. That's Dr. Richard Fyander. Okay. I didn't And I think she's principal his wife. of we used to be well, but we did different. It's a charter school or a private school. She's no principal. Of. Okay. I think you're correct. Are we at the discussion phase? I didn't hear. Yes, we are. We're in um, motion. We're at discussion. Do you have any written information about this uh, consultant, this background, his experience, other than the uh, 
I'm not with skills. me right now. Should we wait to vote on it until? <clears throat> well, if we do, then we uh, lose a month until our next meeting in the, in the process. We go to special meeting. Did you have? Did you already say the list of schools he's working with? Yes, I said right now he's working with Clinton. He um, he has done a, a lot of work for Mendenboro in the past. Um, and I'm I'm blanking. I apologize. I'm blanking. He came recommended by Bill Rivera. Who was not we're not able to do ours. Kristen, question. Yes, Jackie. Uh, if we make the motion and go ahead and uh, decide to hire him, does that doesn't mean that he would be able to take the job necessarily? The ball is then in his court. No, I did I did speak to him and um, and he would be able to. And that would consist of reading resumes that we receive? Yes, filtering, them. filtering resumes, yes, and um, screening the resumes and, and uh, doing reference checks. When you spoke to him, did he give you a resume? Or was it just, did you ask for a resume when you were speaking to him in considering him for this job? I have. He was transmitting uh, information as I was leaving today. As we had with Bill, um, Marcia, you weren't here. I think everybody else was here. John, you were not in the beginning, but uh, Bill kind of had a running list of candidates. Mm -hmm. um, he thought would fit well in certain things. I'm assuming he's very similar in this guy. Yes, he is. And that was um, Bill had given given us some information about Richard Fiander, and and that his process was similar to Bill's, and that's why Bill re had recommended him. Um, and. Um, he also, when I spoke to him, he said that he would have some candidates who he, he would recommend apply for the job. And now, he, would he be able to start as soon as we gave him the word? I believe so. Yes. Know, okay. Two thousand dollars seems like a, a modest investment for the the, uh, the effort we're going to undertake. I don't see why we wouldn't do it. The reason you might not is if there's someone better out there. It's not the $2,000, it's getting the best possible advisor. Oh, well, that's always the case, but given the time constraints we're under, what it comes out highly recommended. What time constraints are those? No, I'm not. I've, I've talked to, I talked to Bill Labrera, or I'm sorry, Anthony talked to Bill Labrera, who um, did some did some research for us? There were not a lot of um, search consultants that were available who um, were recommended, other than Mr. Fiander. Uh, school boards is is also available. Joanne Warren could do a search for us for sixty five hundred dollars plus the cost of the ad. <coughs> I, I did I did call. Um, to check references on both individuals, and he came, or, or both organizations, and he came very highly recommended. I have another, Sorry, I'm another, sorry. Another, I mean, this is the first time that this has been discussed, so we're talking to hiring a superintendent. We've never even talked about it before. Um, the feedback I'm getting is that the faculty, I don't have a lot of contact with the faculty at Mendham, but I do have quite a bit with the faculty at Central. There's a great deal of unease out there that we've lost some of our highest level administrators from the district going back several years. And the faculty is, my impression is that there's a lot of people that are kind of uneasy about things. Maybe we think about taking one of our three upper level administrators as an acting superintendent. That way we're staying in house while we have the time to conduct a search. Would that be a decision made tonight? I, I, and this is the first time that, I mean, I haven't discussed this with any board members, so this is the first time that the topic of hiring a replacement for a chief school administrator has come up. So, I mean, I didn't want to say this, but I just it's a concern I have with knowing many of the staff members, and I don't have a favorite. I think highly of all three of them, but for a temporary period, might not be a bad idea to stay in house with one of our own people. 
I, I, my concern is that if we give a um, acting or an interim position to one of the candidates, then that uh, gives them a leg up on the entire pool when we do go through the process. You mean like we did with Anthony? I wasn't on the board then. But I was here. We did exactly right. the same thing. Right. I mean, he's an expert. But I don't, I don't know that. Candidate. What I don't know is, was there another in-house candidate? I, I don't know. I wasn't here for that. I'm just saying that now, going forward, that if we give, <clears throat> give an, an interim position to one of our in to, to an in-house candidate, and and we have two or three candidates, although I believe one candidate doesn't have paperwork to to be eligible. So, <clears throat> if there were two in-house candidates, and and potential outside candidates, if you give give an interim or an acting job to an inside candidate, there's a perceived edge advantage to that candidate. The Hi. other side of that is it gives you the opportunity to see that person at work and see if they would be a viable candidate for the long-term position. Then your decision's, kind of, I, I, your you decision's made you at that point. Uh, and, that's, and that's my, I, I, I feel that if we start the process, then we can make, make those decisions as we go. Kristen, I don't think Dave said, and you correct me if I'm wrong, that he is proposing that we select one of the three. I think what he's saying is that we consider uh, the three as uh, among the other possible interim candidates. Only two. And if that's what you're saying, Dave, I agree with that. That's scary. Wouldn't, wouldn't. <laughs> you and I agree. <laughs> wouldn't to we start. be doing that I'll anyway as a common start. sense practice? Doing, doing what? The other two, in, the in-house Two, we'd be doing it as a common sense practice. If, if, if they are candidates, I mean, at this right. point, we haven't posted or. or we haven't um, hired anybody. We're just throwing we're just this around beginning, the table. Absolutely. Right, exactly. Shooting just one over to bow. Looking, looking at beginning the process, that's it. However the, however, the board wants to begin that process. Yep. Uh, my thought process is if Bill Libera is recommending a consultant and you've seen some preliminary, that is all of the information I need, a man of his integrity. If he's recommending somebody to our board, I will jump on that in a minute, especially over New Jersey school boards. I've been through that process several times in the past. I, I'd like so so I, would, I would recommend to the board that we go through hiring Dr. Fiander or Brian? Yes. Brian? Yes. Richard. Uh, Richard Fiander, <laughs> as a consultant for our superintendent search that we put advertising in the internet site and also the Star Ledger and that we <coughs> move forward from this point. And just to remind people, we do have a motion on the table uh, um, about retaining Richard Fiander. So. I have a question. Um, when you retain someone in that capacity, is it for a certain time period? No, it's to, to complete the job unless it goes, you know, our, our circumstance uh, last year in, in the principal hire that dragged out an additional year. Uh, okay. Due to budgetary concerns. Right, during, right due to budgetary concerns. Um, that, was, that was also until the job was done. Is, yeah, is the consultant for the, would we hire the consultant for also to screen for the interim position or go right to the permanent? We would go right to the permanent. You would not hire a unless consultant to necessary. screen for an interim unless it becomes necessary and then he can make recommendations. So, so what, what, what would be the process then for hiring an interim? You would begin the, in, the, the process with any in-house and outside candidates. Without a consultant screening? No, with, with, well, if, you, if the full board doesn't want a consultant, then without a consultant, or if the board would like to have a consultant no, I'm just trying to under that. understand what you're proposing. So the consultant would work first on the interim position and no, then on the permanent? No, the consultant would work first on the permanent. We have three months before Dr. DiBattista leaves the district. We can begin that process for the superintendent search, not an interim search. And then if it becomes necessary to, ha to have an interim, um, then, we, then he can make recommendations. Is there any value to asking Anthony if he thinks an in-house interim is a 
better is a good solution for. He's right here. You can ask him. Well, I know, but I'm, it's kind of putting him on the spot. I don't know if he'd like to think about it or, you know, does he have a professional opinion? I already asked him. Oh, well. Well, I'll answer. It seems to me that this is the most important hire this board makes, and essentially it's the only hire this board makes. Once you choose a superintendent, every hire that comes before you is essentially a fait accompli. I think that you should vet this discussion at this moment, get all of the variables on the table, make a decision so that you could move forward in a timely way. I'll do anything to help you. I'll even make the offer that at the end of my contract on February 29th, if you haven't gotten someone and it's legal, I'll work for a month for free. Okay? Okay. All, all I'm suggesting is that we begin the process. There's nothing gained in, in delay. But I just feel like I'm, I'm, I don't have information to, you know, it would be nice to have the resume of Mr. Fyander at least. Yeah, and I, I kind of get the impression that this decision was made before the board uh, met tonight. This is, no, I, all I said was that if you don't want a consultant, then we don't need a consultant. If the board wants a consultant, that is the only one that I've been able to, to find who's available and not conflicted in, in the last um, couple of weeks. And if we decide we want to look at a range of consultants, then it goes to the next uh, January meeting where we would decide on the consultant. But, or could but in the meantime, we can still go ahead and advertise, yes. There's no chance for a, an interim decision meeting on that consultant. Uh, before Clarify. The what do you mean meeting? an interim decision meeting? A hold, holding a special, special meeting? Special yeah. Meeting. Okay. Uh, what's our, I don't know. I mean, we, we do have uh, winter break, so. January 12th? January 9th. January 9th, January 2nd is a holiday. So. You could, you could potentially, I don't know everybody's calendar, but you could potentially hold a meeting on January 3rd or 4th if that were clear. Well, you know, I, I look around at people on the board and there's one person that's been an administrator and I have somebody here who's willing to help. I mean, I mean this is, to me, somewhat common sense. Let's start moving forward a little bit. I mean, nobody's... Let's worry about a special meeting. What's the special meeting going to say? Yeah, we want this guy. Yeah, we don't want this guy. Let's talk to him. Not that big of a deal. You know, I mean, I haven't been called tonight, but all I know is that I have somebody who's willing to help. They have one other guy on the board. You guys got all day to, to, to sit around and, and go through resumes? I don't have that. Jamie, do you? No, it would have been nice tonight to be able to review the resume of the proposed consultant. Well, great. So, you know, we'll call the guy tomorrow and get and have him faxes to us for God's sake. Right. Can I get the resume you know. off your phone? Can you get my, the resume off my yeah, I mean, phone? Yeah, he emailed you, could you get it off your phone? Yeah. No, I didn't say that. Is this my phone? No, we're, we're not here to oversee minutia. When we hired Bill Labrera, he came recommended by Dr. DBT right. We did not, we did not go through a, a search consultant search process. I, all I tried to do was bring information about about the search <coughs> consultants that I was, have been able to find who were highly recommended, and if you're not happy with them, we can certainly go, or with this one, or school boards, we can certainly uh, go back to the table on that. <coughs> or we can choose to not use a consultant and screen resumes ourselves. Kristen? Yes. Um, our district mission is to provide each student with an intellectually stimulating experience in a safe environment, et cetera, et cetera. I won't go through the whole thing. This board is, is meant to provide that environment to our students, regardless of who is the chief school administrator, superintendent. We, we can't, we, we owe it to them to keep moving and, and get somebody in place as soon as we can, because whether we like it or not, School goes on, second marking period ends, third marking period ends, the year ends, a class graduates, another class comes in, regardless of the approach we're using. 
we owe it to our communities to keep things moving and to keep mm -hmm. the person, uh, to keep someone at, uh, at, the, at the top of our chain of command. That's all. Thank you, Jackie. Call the question. What? Yeah. All right. The uh, question on the table is uh, to, or is to, uh, motion on the table is to hire the consultant, uh, Richard Fiander, to assist with the superintendent search process. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Dave? Any abstentions? Uh, I will get the resume together and send it to um, to everybody as soon as, as soon as I get back and get all that stuff together. Yes. Do we need, also need a board motion to do the advertising? Uh, at this point, it would probably be wise. I'll make a motion that we advertise in you don't need the Star you, Ledger. You, you don't need one. We don't need, we don't one, need one. one. Okay. Excuse me. Yes, Jackie. But well, let's confirm at least what we will be advertising. So we talked about four or five different names of organizations were mentioned. Star Ledger, New Jersey School Jobs.com. You would like Ed Week also, if possible? You're not going to get somebody from out of New Jersey to come here. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you won't, really. You know yeah. that. Check the schedule for them. and I'll, yeah, I'll check, but, but yeah, I agree. Is there a lot of cost there? Yes. Ed Week is expensive. It's very expensive. Oh, everybody's leaving New Jersey. Excuse right? me. Coming to New Jersey. Yes, Jackie. Should we be memorializing this motion we just passed? Oh, okay. Number 23 or whatever? D Doug will mo uh, number it. I'm sorry? The motion that we just passed. Should yeah. we memorialize it? Yeah, we will. Or we could just include it in the minutes. The motion we just passed for the consultant <clears throat> right. will be in the minutes. Okay. Yes. And also, I, uh, I can, um, we can advertise on, on New Jersey... Uh, Association of School Business Officials, they also right. uh, have a website for um, that type of advertising, no charge. All right, is there any other new business? All right, then at this time I'd like to open to the public. Yes, Mr. Nadi. Step up to the microphone, state your name, town, limit your comments to five minutes or less. John Motti again. Um, there was no other candidate that was qualified except for Michael Riley when we did uh, interim with Mr. Dr. D. Batista, excuse me. And Michael said he did not want to be involved in it. He wanted to stay as principal. That answers that question. Thank you. Secondly, it is the most important job you have as a board. If you want to new school board training and listened, okay, with policy negotiation, those are the three things that you do is hire a qualified superintendent. You need somebody to check their credentials. If you remember many, many years ago, Mount Olive, I think, hired somebody that their credentials did not fit what their job was. And that blew up in their face. So that person who you're hiring as a consultant, you might want to ask them how you should word the ad. If you look in the Star Ledger on Sunday in employment section, you'll see all the superintendents, and there's quite a few of them. Okay, so uh, with that information, I know Judy Ferguson used to be a consultant at one time, but she does not do that anymore. She does. She works for Bill O'Brien. Does she? Okay. Um, <clears throat> I know she worked for a different firm, and then she changed. Last, I would ask the board if they could contact school boards. It seems since they changed the format, and I think it's still changed where new board members only go for a one-day training. Correct. And then after that, you have continuous training. Mm -hmm. They had a three-day brainstorm where you had to stay there. I knew it, co knew it cost the board more money. But, boy, they, I was involved. I trained three years uh, with people. It was a great situation. You could ask questions of board members. You could sit around and talk to them late at night, pick their brains. And it really taught you how to be a school board member as far as picking a superintendent. And the policy. process you went through. Right. Yep. Okay, it was three strong days of training. How to ask a question. Don't take secondhand information and bring it to your board and waste time. Go through the channels. A good board member tells you to do that. Don't bring it to the table. You're here to develop things. 
Now, now Kristen, um, you, excuse me, you I think I'm talking. This is open Thank to you. the public. Okay. Thank you. And I would like you as a board maybe to contact school boards and ask them to go back to that format because I think that was a great format for new school board members. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I did go through that three-day training and it was very informative. Any other questions or comments from the public? Hi, I'm Lucy Jimenez from Chester Township. First, I want to say, um, Dr. DiBattista, I'm sorry to hear that you're going to be retiring. Um, basically, due to all this political stuff that's been going on. Um, it's actually my first time at a board meeting, and um, I've never really been involved, but I've heard things coming up lately that have really made me want to start coming and, and getting involved. And one of the questions I have for the board, and maybe someone can answer this for me, is um, along the lines of all this political stuff. Um, I've been um, reading up on things that I've seen um, regarding the board and several board members, and one of them being the founder of CBS. Um, the way I've read the board um, code of ethics, that seems as that that in itself would be a conflict of interest. Is that not the case? Uh, it certainly seems like a conflict to me. Okay, so then how is it then that um, this continues um, to be the situation if it's true that one of the members did found or you know start CBS, how is it that they are allowed then to continue on the board? The board is not empowered to remove one of its members. And, or, to, or to censure them. Okay, and how does that Okay, I'm, I'm there, trying to learn. A, there's a uh, school ethics commission who is charged with all of those decisions, and if a uh, member of the public, any member of the public, has a complaint, they, that's where they have okay, to Okay, because uh, along those same lines, um, as, um, as a parent of a special ed child with four other regular ed children, um, there's been comments that I've seen that, um, again, have been made and are very appalling to hear um, from a member of the board regarding special ed children. Um, and um, I don't know if I um, am allowed to direct specific questions to board members, but again, along with those lines, um, it is very appalling to hear the, the opinions of certain board members regarding um, any of our children much less the special ed children, so. Such as? Um, from what I saw on YouTube, and um, I've been told, there was comments such as, um, why are we spending so much of our district money on children who will be the least likely to contribute to our society um, or to succeed? Um, why can't we find cheaper schools for these children? Things along those lines, which, as I said, are very appalling to the parent of a special ed child. And okay. I would like to clarify that that's not the position of the board as a whole. No, and I understand that. Okay. But again, w along with all these political things, <clears throat> it seems that it's the same group, uh, you know, that continue to, to bring up these issues. And that's why I feel the need now to get involved, because I feel it's very, um, it's very upsetting to hear these kinds of things. And it makes you concerned that in which direction is the, you know, this eventually going to lead if this is the opinion of people on the board. So... Okay. Understand. That's Thank it. you very much. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Beth Kakuza, I'm a number o. I did not plan on speaking tonight, but I've been sitting here and listening to all the comments and just feel, you probably don't need to hear from me, but I felt like I needed to say something. Um, I was a student at Menham High School from 1987 to 1991. I did not have Dr. DiBattista, but was not unaffected by his presence at the school. One of My only regret at Menham High School is that I did not take his Western Civilization class, because as I heard from everybody, it was the greatest class, and even though I didn't have him, I graduated knowing he was one of the greatest teachers. Um, I was a teacher in two different districts, one with strong administration and one in which the administration was lacking. I, have, I know from a teacher's perspective firsthand how important leadership in a school district is. I've also spent the last seven years as an education consultant working in a number of districts across the state. I've seen what poor administration can do to the staff, 
the school environment, and ultimately to student achievement. I now have a first grader and a preschooler in the Mendenboro schools. I sincerely hope that we are able to find an excellent leader for this district so that in seven years, when my kids are ready to come here, we still have a district that lives up to the standards set by Dr. DiBattista. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Scobletti. Hi. Mike Scobletti, Mendham. Uh, history can be depressing, uh, almost as depressing as, as board meetings where we hear that maybe it's a good idea to lowball the new superintendent because, you know, we care about quality education. Uh, one thing from history that occurs to me is that in Britain, 1945, after grueling years of World War, Britain and her allies celebrated the victory. And in 1945, Britain then voted out Winston Churchill. No leader is so great or so accomplished that they cannot be felled by politics. And it is disgusting. War may be politics by other means, but civil war is the most uncivil form of war. And we lament that Socrates has drank the poison, but there's nothing we can do but try to work as communities and work forward so that this community can rise and be better than some of its members. Thank you. Thank you. Leslie? I'm Leslie Mulet, Washington Township. And Dr. D. Batista, I just wanted to um, take the opportunity to thank you so much. I have not always agreed with you, but I have always respected you. I am so impressed with how smart you are, how fair, how professional. I am very impressed with the direction that you've taken our districts and your leadership. I know quite a few teachers at the high school, at Central, and um, you are loved and supported. Obviously, by some of the meetings that we've had, you can see the support, and I hope that you're feeling it tonight. Um, when I read that you were retiring, I was angry. Um, maybe first I was sad, but I am angry. And um, I've been taking some time. I wanted to prepare a statement so I didn't get up here and sound like an idiot. I couldn't find the words. I could not find the words to express how angry I am. And I have been reading a lot about the CBS group, and I'd really like to know who, who these people are. I've never met a bully. I'm grateful to say that I have never met a bully. But I would like to see who you are. So if anyone is here that is on the CBS, stand up and, and be proud of what you're doing. Um, I've had a lot of opinions, and can, can one, per one person at a time, please. And I find it interesting that you're not standing up, Mr. Button, if that is true, that you are on this team. I've also heard that the CBS team or group has even changed their name because it's become so toxic. I'm not sure if that's true, but... Um, and one last comment, I find it very hypocritical that we as a district are asking our children to be kind and respect each other and not to bully other people, but then as adults, that's exactly what we do. Um, I would just really go, like to go back to my beginning and thank you, Dr. D. Batista, and I'm sorry. I really am sorry for any pain that's been sent to you. And um, yeah, I just wish you well and God bless you. Can I answer you? Excuse me? Can I answer you? Sure. May I answer your question? Sure, I'd like to see it. It's, it's, it's not pain. Okay, let's begin with that. I, um, no, it's not <laughs> relief either. In, in beginning to plan for this retirement letter, I, um, I thought about two things. One, I entered the profession with very low expectations. My father, who was a Mason, said to me he was very proud that I was a teacher. And I said, why, Pop? And he said, it got you inside work. <laughs> and, uh, so that was, that was my beginning, and I, I took my high school yearbook down as I decided to write the retirement letter. 
And one of the things they asked all of the seniors was, what did you want to be doing 10 years from now? And the answer under my picture was that I wanted to be teaching high school history. How lucky was I to have been able to do that? And how lucky was I to have been able to do that here at Mendham High School? I love this district. My retirement was going to happen in June. It's just a few months earlier. This district is my third parent and my fourth child. My mother is an immigrant who was illiterate in two languages. English is my second language. I wouldn't be alive if it were not for public education. I have great dreams for public education. I'm trained as an educator and I'm trained as a Renaissance historian. I'm not trained as a politician. I haven't been able to achieve the dreams that I've wanted in recent months, so for personal and professional reasons, this retirement has moved up by just a few months, but I thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I couldn't have been luckier than to teach your students, to work with you as colleagues, and to be a part of this community. Thanks. I don't think anyone can top that, but if anybody <laughs> has any additional comments or questions, now's the time. Going once. <laughs> okay. I'd like to get back to this harassment. Can you hear me? I'd like to get back to this harassment and intimidation and bullying. The policy that you have on your website is that students learn by example and that the buck stops with the board. What is the board going to do to address the bully, Mr. Button, on your board? It's a very good question. It's a really good question that I would love to have an answer to. It, it says it right here. It's no, there's no tolerance here. No tolerance. You're not going to tolerate the students being bullies. I don't understand why you're tolerating a board member to be a bully, which he has been. Everybody knows he has been. And he's destructive. And he's destruct, destroying the district. So I'd really like to know what your ideas are, what you plan to do, how you plan to implement your policy that you have and follow through so the students can learn by your example. The policy is for students and as a board of education, we are governed by statutes set upon us by the state of New Jersey. Yes, and it does say here on the, the state of New Jersey statute that substantially disrupts or interferes with the orderly operation of the school. I don't think they had it in their wildest dreams to put in a board member. But believe me, they will be hearing from me tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Yes. Okay, I can't resist. I'm sorry, but um, you know. Name, please. Name, Lisa Woodring from Long Valley. You know, three and a half years ago, three and a half years ago, the people of Mendham Township voted in Mr. Jamie Button to be on this board. He had, um, he was interviewed by Bob Thomas, I believe, or it was actually Phil Garber. And in the, in the newspaper, The Observer, I remember reading that that month, there was an article about what Mr. why Mr. Button wanted your votes, or wanted the votes of Mendham Township residents. He had two issues that he was pushing, um, and that, that's why he wanted your vote. One of them was a PE exemption. Okay, we've been, been there, done that. You know, he didn't get what he wanted. He got something that was halfway. Um, you know, real, a real important educational issue. Um, number two, he wanted to de-regionalize our district. It was in plain black and white on, in the paper. The people of Mendham Township voted him in. 
you got to assume that the people in Mendham Township wanted to demutualize the district, maybe not everyone, but enough people did to get his one or two votes over Mr. Fairchild. So he got, in, he got on the board. So now we've got him. I don't think the board can remove him. I think we just heard the, the president say we can't remove him. The board can't do it. We have to remove him. Mendham Township, if you're not happy with his uh, performance on this board, I suggest you do something about it. Uh, I guess I'll find out what I can do about it. I'm not really sure. We have not talked about education on this board for three and a half years since the moment he walked on the board. We've sat here and taken it. It's, it's amazing to me. Um, now, I'm, I'm, I know that Mr. De Batista is not running away. He's, this is, he said himself, this isn't painful. Um, not running away from the bully, but he wants to talk about education. He wants to further this district. He can't do that with this going on. And you are the leader. You can deny it all you want. You have people working on the outside here, away from the board, who can't be um, attacked, I guess. You know, people like us that are sitting out here. So I would say, you know, people, stand up, get, you know, do something about this. We have to, if we can't remove them from the board, we can, as a public, demand that we focus on education, that we don't listen to this garbage that has been going on the last three and a half years. It's been really bad this past year. And get back to education. We all need to do it. Our district could be in trouble. I would say we still have a very superior district. But you can't just bank on the fact that it's going to stay that way. Because we have people, subversive people, who want to break it up. And they'll break it up however, however they can do it. Doesn't matter if they take the district with them or destroy the district. So please get involved, stand up. Let's try to figure out as a public how we can focus, refocus the board's time and our whole collective time on education in this district. I have two boys in the district. I want them to have the same experience that my college son did. Um, and I think well, we all have students and we all want the greatest experience that we can get. And Dr. DePasista, thank you so much for all your years. Thank you. And um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? If there are none others, then I will close to the public and ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Jackie. Second. Second. Thank you, Dave. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yep.